Safety concerns for staff members at the state's largest psychiatric hospital have been ongoing for years. And despite their cries for help, staff there say that no significant change has been made and the state's 48-hour rule is making things more volatile. Fox 9's Mary McGuire has the story. It was a long, hard road, so it's, it's something that, that's very dear to me. A career in nursing is about more than just a paycheck for Alicia Roberts. After facing her own mental health struggles for many years, she feels a special connection to the patients she treats at the Anoka Metro Regional Treatment Center, the state's largest psychiatric hospital. I always tell my patients, this is a road bump. You know, this is something that it's slowing you down, but you're going to get past it. But the important work she and her coworkers do every day has been overshadowed by concerns for their physical safety. Roberts claims staff members are being assaulted by patients on a weekly basis, and we're not talking about just a slap or a kick. One of the patients came out of their room behind him and was able to take one of the light switch plates off of the wall and come behind him and, and basically lash him. Photos shared with Fox 9 show the aftermath of the attack that left a nurse with lacerations to the head and a broken wrist. It's not just workers being hurt, too. Patients come out of their room dripping blood. They don't know what happened because they were in their room sleeping and they were violently attacked. If the incident is so bad it warrants a 911 call, Roberts claims patients are often back at the facility by the end of the day. Because of, you know, all these laws and stuff we have, they're going to come right back and you have to work with that person again. It's a slap in the face. The law she's referring to is the state's 48-hour rule, which mandates mental health patients accused of a crime be transferred out of jail and into a facility within two days of civil commitment. In 2016, the Fox 9 investigators dug deep into the issue and found because of the rule, Anoka became almost a de facto prison, creating a mix of the mentally ill and criminally dangerous. Right now, nearly every patient at Anoka was admitted there from jail. You know, we're taking in patients that come in with shackles with the sheriff and then they get in our sally port, they take the, the shackles off and we walk down the hallway, you know, inches from each other like nothing happened. In 2019, the Department of Human Services and Anoka Police mutually ended their contract to provide security services at the hospital. Police reserve officers were replaced by a safety support team specially trained to respond to incidents using patient-centered de-escalation techniques. Robert says the team in place now does good work, but is not adequately staffed. Without more bodies, nurses often feel like sitting ducks. It's horrible and it's sad that we can't provide the care that we really want to provide for these individuals. For its part, DHS says they're adding 30 more full-time employees to the team, so two safety support members can be embedded on the hospital's six units. The agency also points to a downward trend in OSHA recordable injuries due to patient aggression at the hospital. As of May 8th, DHS records list 21 incidents at Anoka so far this year, but Robert says the actual number of attacks and injuries happening is far greater. One of the major problems she believes has to be addressed is in the pre-screening process that sends inmates to the facility in the first place. More staff and security support is also essential. We signed up for this job, but we expect to be protected then in, in that same breath. Now, in a statement, the executive director of mental health and substance abuse treatment services for DHS said in part that because they care for individuals with severe mental illnesses and challenging behaviors, they can't eliminate all risk of patient aggression towards staff, but they are taking steps to reduce those risks. That includes regular incident review, active training and retraining and adding staff when necessary. Mary McGuire, Fox 9.